Shabbat Shalom, dear beloved brothers and sisters. What a wonderful pleasure to gather together to hear the word of God and be edified one with the other. Today we are going to talk about God's provision for the end times. But before we start, let us bow our heads before the living God and pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we worship you and praise you and thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, for your grace. Thank you, Father, for your perfect plan for each and every one of us. Thank you that it's you who draw us nigher to yourself. It is you who called us. It is you who saved us. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done and all that you are. We ask you, Lord, that you'll be in the midst of us. Lord, that as we all quieten our souls to hear your word, that every heart will be open and receive a word that will touch their heart. Receive a revelation from you, Lord God. Receive a touch from your hands. Lord, let our ears be open to hear what your spirit is saying to the church and to each of us individually. Let our eyes be open, Lord, to the spirit realm, that we may see what your spirit is doing, what you are doing in these last days, Lord. We ask you of all this, Lord, in the glorious and mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your Holy Son. And we all say, Amen. Okay, I just want to ask a question to each of you. And I ask myself the same. Do we believe that God is going to provide in the last days? Well, I believe that God will provide to those that trust him in the midst of tests. We have examples in the Bible of how God provided for his people for them that trusted him, for them that obeyed him, for them that believed in him, to them that were his friends. And so I believe it will be the same case for all of us in the last days as we grow more and more mature in the things of God, as we grow to trust more and more in the power in the love, in the mercies of God. As we grow in a wonderful and deeper relationship with Jesus, we learn to trust him and him alone. We no longer can, we cannot trust ourselves. We cannot trust man, but we can trust the Lord. In the book of Genesis, chapter 22, talks about, Abraham, who with Sarah received an amazing miracle from God when they could not have children. They were too old. But God, in his grace, granted them to conceive a son, Isaac. This child was the delight of their lives. And the day came when God tested Abraham's faith, Abraham's trust. Because the Bible says, I shall test the hearts of men. God has all the right to test our hearts and see whether we are really doing what we say we would. If we really truly trust in him as we say we do. So he asked Abraham to sacrifice his son for him. And you would think, oh, this is cannot be. This is someone that God gave me. This is a gift of God. But God has the right to ask us from whatever he's given us. Every good and perfect thing comes from God, says the word but he still can reserve the rights to take. 
he gives and he can take. But I believe that God did not intend to have Isaac killed. His intention was to see whether Abraham loved his son more than God. And the fact is, this question could be rising up through these scriptures right into our hearts. Do we love God more than our family members, our children and grandchildren, our spouses, our parents? Do we love God more than the possessions we have? More than ourselves? Well, let's have a look of the test that Abraham went. It is in Genesis chapter 22 and verses 13 and 14. In verse 13 says, Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket of its, by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. You see, Abraham passed his test. He was willing to offer up his son. Why? Because he trusted God could bring his son back from death to life. He trusted God that in the midst of that test and trial, that God knew what he was doing. Now we see other examples in the word of God. That the Lord provides food for his prophets and these prophets were the people that had relationship with him. They were close to him. They did whatever he asked them to do. They were friends of God. And the question is, am I a friend of God? Am I close enough to God that he can ask me anything? That I be willing to do anything for him? to go to any extent to please him? That is the question. Now let's look at the scriptures in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8 to 9. Elijah and the widow. Verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Elijah, saying, Arise, go to Serapath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Amazing. God calls a widow. Usually widows have nobody to take care of them. They usually in those days it was the husband that provided for the wife and the children. Here is a widow. How much could this widow have? <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> However, God chooses a widow to provide for his prophet. And therefore, his prophet went. Thus, also provisions come from people and for people who prepare their hearts to seek the Lord. There is an amazing story in the second book of Chronicles, chapter 30, verse 18 to 20. Verse 18 says, For a multitude of people, many from Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulun, had not cleansed themselves according to the traditions. Yet they ate the Passover contrary to what was written. Hezekiah prayed for them saying may the good Lord provide atonement for everyone 
who prepares his heart to seek God, the Lord God of his fathers, though he is not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. And the Lord listened to Hezekiah and healed those people. So here we have an example. These people have not cleansed themselves according to the traditions of those days. But there was somebody, in this case Hezekiah, who prayed and interceded for them. So God will have mercy and compassion and provide atonement to them and for them. And so God heard. So here we, we can look into the scriptures and say, what does this have to do with the end times? Well, in the end times, there will be people that are not cleansed their hearts. They have not cleansed themselves from the world and the things of this world. And they come to partake, as it were, from the bread of the saints. And when they come, I believe that this these people will come. They are hungry. They are thirsty. But they are not cleansed. They don't know how to, maybe. But the fact is, what are we going to do? Are we going to say, no, you cannot partake of the bread that God gives us? Because you're not clean? Because you don't belong to this denomination and you don't belong to this church or this group. What are we going to do in the end times? Let us do what Hezekiah did. Let us intercede for these people that God will make them ready and able, that God will provide atonement. What greater atonement than the Lord Jesus Christ? This is the days where the great harvest is going to come. What are we going to do? Are we going to share the bread with them that know not God? And shall we perhaps share the bread of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, with them? This is our opportunity to shine the light and show the Lord unto a world that is not clean, is not yet purified in their hearts by the Holy Ghost, by the Word of God. They don't know the Word. But it's up to us to feed them with the manna from heaven. Just like Hezekiah did. And God will hear us. And if he has to multiply the bread, he will multiply the bread because we trust in him. That one single morsel of bread can become many morsels of bread as he did multiply for the people in Israel. He can multiply in the end times. Amen. The question is, do we believe that he will do this? Do we trust in him enough? This is something in between God and each and every one of us. And if we don't, if we realize that we don't trust enough on the Lord, we don't trust enough that he will provide, whether there is fears or uneasiness or unbelief, this is the day for us to ask God for grace. Ask God for faith, for more wisdom. Ask God for a breakthrough that we may trust him. Ask God to help us to get closer to him that we may know him well. You see, when we know God as who he is, we will trust him because he's faithful and true. He is powerful and awesome in power. Amen. Now the Lord 
even uses kings of the world to provide for the righteous in the old times. How much more will the Lord provide for the righteous? But people of authority that are of this world, God can do anything. Let's look at the book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 18 to 19. It says, And whatever seems good to you, this is uh, King Artaxerxes talking to Prophet Ezra. And whatever seems good to you and your brethren to do with the rest of the silver and the gold, do according to the will of God. Also the articles that are given to you for the service of the house of your God, deliver in full before the God of Jerusalem. And whatever more may be needed for the house of your God, with you may have occasion to provide Pay for it from the king's treasury. How amazing that King Arthur Sexus would do such a thing and send Ezra with all the provisions needed and leave the door open for Ezra to buy whatever else is necessary for the building of the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. What a God we serve. It is time for us to begin to realize he is a good God. He's a merciful God. And he has good purpose even when we go through trials and tribulation. It is at the end for our good. Because he knows what he's doing. And he's in control. Now, we know that God also provides not just food, but wisdom and his strategic plans. Like in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 2 to 8, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall in various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. See the purposes of God? within trials and tribulations, is that we may come to the completeness of maturity, lacking nothing. Verse 5, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God. In reality, why should we try to find our own ways to provide for ourselves? When he says, ask God who gives to all liberally and without reproach. See, God does not reproach us, and it will be given to us, to him. But let him ask in faith. See, when we ask, <coughs> excuse me, when we ask the Lord, we must ask in faith. We must ask believing that whatsoever we ask by faith, it shall be given. So let him ask by faith, with no doubts. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Regarding wisdom, there is a wisdom from above, and in the wisdom that is demonic. And that is very clearly distinguished in book of James, chapter 3, verse 13 to 18. It says, verse 13, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, so there is confusion and every evil thing there. So, 
envy is a very bad thing and self-seeking is really bad for us. Verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. I would love to suggest that we meditate in this verse and as we meditate in these verses, we ask, Lord, Lord, Holy Spirit, convict me if there is any of these things that are lacking in me. For this is the wisdom God wants us to have in full. And if anyone is lacking, he says, ask God. Is there anything at all here in this verse that we could do better? Because, my beloved, God's fury is against them who speak against God in unbelief. He might not provide for these people at the end. Because he's a trustworthy God. And he, he's furious about the unbelief of people. And this is regarding provision in Psalm 78, verse 19 to 25 says this. Wow, listen to this, pay attention. Verse 19, yes, they spoke against God. They said, can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Behold, he struck the rock so that the waters would gush out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide meat for his people? Therefore the Lord heard this and was furious. So fire was kindled against Jacob and anger also came against Israel because they did not believe in God and did not trust in his salvation. Yet he had commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He had raised down manna for them to eat and given them of the bread of heaven. Men ate angels' food. He sent them food to be full. And yet, they questioned God. They did not believe in God. They did not trust him. The thing is, Lord, are we in any way mistrusting you? After all the miracles, even the miracle that we breathe, Lord, even the miracle that we have bread every day in our household, and so many miracles that God has done in our lives. Some of those miracles, we don't even know them because he's done them behind our back like a loving father that protects us, of which we never thank him. Today we should say thank you, Lord, for all the things you've done to protect us and be known to us. But let us not be like the Israelite in those days, that even though God did all those miracles, they didn't believe him. They did not acknowledge his kindness, his power, just wanted more and more in doubt. And this is what's happening in many nations nowadays. People no longer trust God, no longer believe in God. They go to and fro, stressed and overworked trying to solve their own problems because they don't trust that God will do it for them. In Psalm 20 verse 7, says some trust in chariots. I would say this is in their own strength. Some trust in horses, their own flesh. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. 
concerning provisions. His name is Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. He is a good God. Amen. Now, um, Let's uh, look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 8. It says, Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened unto you. For everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be opened. This is God's promise. And God's encouraging us. Ask. Don't just go round and around and around and around the mountain in your own strength, in your own understanding. Lean not in your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your strength, with all of your soul, your emotions, your thoughts. Trust in Him. Lean not in your own understanding, in all your ways, says the Scriptures. Acknowledge him as the sovereign God, the creator of heaven and earth. He made the, 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 the moon, the luminaries, the whole galaxies, the whole universe. He is so great. He's so capable of providing whatsoever we need. But some ask in greed. God provides for the needs. Amen. He says, ask. And it shall be given. But when you pray, in Matthew 6, chapter 7 to 8 says, Use not vain repetitions as the heathens do. You know, don't get into prayers, blah, 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 blah. You don't even feel it. Your heart is not there. The heart is not even believing. It's a just-in-case prayer. No, 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 no. Ask God's Holy Spirit to help you. To really, truly mean and really, truly trust. He can do it. They think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. But not you, therefore, like unto them. For your Father knows what things you have need of before even you ask. If God knows what you need before you ask. Why would he ask you to ask? First of all, for all of us to learn to humble ourselves before the mighty God and realize that we have a need and realize we have only one way out of it and that is our God. It is to encourage relationship with him. Amen. Matthew 21, 21 and 22 says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If you have faith and thou not, you shall not only do this which I done to the fig tree, but also you shall say unto the mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and it shall be done. And all these things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Amen. <coughs> God is warning us never to ask for the last of the flesh. James chapter 4, verse 1 and 4 says, From whence come wars and fighting and among you? Come they not, hence even of your last that war in your own members? You last and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not, because you have not asked. See? <coughs> Pardon me. You ask and receive not. Ah, what is this? Why? Because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own lust. And God calls the people that ask just to 
for their own lust, just to have, for the sake of having more, he calls them adulteress and adulteresses. And he says, know ye not that the friendship with the world is enmity with God? So when we are filled with the desires for the material things of this world, and we ask just because we want more material things for the sake of more. We are then having friendship with the world and God calls us adulterers. That means we are making, com committing adultery against the living God. It is fearsome to be thrown into the hands of a God as great as he is. Though he is merciful, he is also righteous. He says, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is enemy to God. So we can expect what God will do to our enemies, he will do to those that love the world more than love God. So in these last days, we, need, we, we are confronted with these questions. Do I love God more? Do I love the things of this world more? Am I willing to uh, go by without, get by without the things that this world offers? You know, beloved, it's time to cut off from the system of this world. God allows us to enjoy, enjoy the things that are in this world. And we can have these things of this world. But we must never allow the things of the world to have us. And when we desire them more than we desire God, the world already has got us. But the goodness of it is that we can confess to the Father. We can ask for help with true repentant heart. And we can be restored into our relationship with God and given grace to say no, to resist the devil. And the devil will flee away. Amen. Because in the book of John chapter 15, verse 7 said, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask whatever you will and it shall be done unto you. What is the Lord saying? Relationship. Be together with me day and night. Ask me what you need. Ask me for wisdom, for revelation. Talk to me and hear my advice and follow my words. And we'll be friends and I will protect you. In John 14 verse 13, Jo chapter 14 of the book of John, verse 13, he says, And whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. God will answer, he will guide, he will lead, he will instruct, he will help and protect them who live a fasted life. What is a fasted life? Deny your flesh of the lustful desires. Enjoy life. Enjoy love. The love of the Lord. Enjoy friendship with the brothers and sisters. But deny the lust of the flesh. And you shall overcome. In the last words in Isaiah 50, verse 6 to 11 says, it is not the fast that I have chosen to lose the bonds of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked, that you cover him? And not hide yourself from your own flesh, from your own relatives when they need. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. See? That's the key for healing, isn't it? 
and your righteousness shall go forth before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of fingers, the speaking of wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness and the darkness shall be as a noonday. The Lord will guide you continuously and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. And therefore, as in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, 21, I would like to exhort the Lord our God. In verse 20, say, Now unto him that is able to exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us unto him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end and with this we say amen shall we bow our heads father your word has been released and I believe that many wonderful hearts has embraced your word. Let your word bring forth questions and answers to every heart and cause your word to bring us closer to you, Lord, and closer, Lord God, to your heart. Prepare us for this end time and give us the grace we need, Lord, to trust in you in every circumstance, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say, Amen. Until we meet again, dear beloved, God bless you.